What a blessing that I get to spend a little bit of Shavuot morning with my dear friend, Rabbi David Ackerman. Rabbi Ackerman serves as the rabbi of Congregation Beth Am Israel in Penn Valley, Pennsylvania. And I am really just so thrilled um, to be able to learn some Torah from you this morning. Thank you, Deborah. Oh, how great to see you on a Yom Tif morning. I suspect the last time that happened was uh, maybe in Israel, maybe 35 years ago. <laughs> yeah. So, um, Boker Tov, I think it's morning for just about everybody who's, who might be on. Our, our, friends, our friends in Europe and Israel, it's already afternoon. And, um, and proving to be yet another uh, painful and difficult day in Israel. Um, but for most of us, uh, it is the morning. And this is the morning on which we receive Torah. We get to stand together at Sinai uh, to meet God, to receive Torah. But we're not really there. My virtual background suggests that I might be there, but it's a virtual background. It's one of the things we have learned together over these 15 or 16 months of uh, living and experiencing and uh, conducting our religious lives on Zoom. Backgrounds can be manipulated. They can be invented. They can be imagined. I want to share with you in the next few minutes two poems. One contemporary, one medieval, that explore exactly that phenomenon of somehow experiencing revelation without actually being at the foot of the mountain. And digging into what that might mean, what that might feel like, what that experience might look like. And these two poems come at that question from different perspectives and in different ways. And at the same time, they both lean on, rely on words from our tradition. Ancient words, in one case, a uh, very famous piece of Midrash, but also the language of Exodus 19 itself. And in another case, the words of one of the Psalms, and I'll, I'll share with you exactly which one and, and what its significance is or was, uh, to, uh, to that particular poet. Uh, one of the Psalms and also uh, the writing and work of uh, one of our tradition's greatest spiritual teachers, uh, namely Bachya ibn Pakuda, whose book Chovot HaLivavot, uh, Obligations of the Heart, uh, is really considered, uh, uh, you know, kind of the pioneering work of, of, uh, of Musar, uh, and uh, and of uh, of a certain kind of deeply felt and deeply experienced spirituality. So, enough introduction. Here's here's poem number one. I'm going to read it in Hebrew. Uh, and if um, uh, and there it is on the screen. Amazing how that works. Um, uh, so page one is is the Hebrew and. Um, I want to I want to share it with you. Just bear with me one second. There we go. Kulam kfar halchu hel el hahar umichakim michakim lirot b'sheket rav michakim shelok min hagam. Gam ha-chamorim, gam ha-gmalim, 
בשקט הזה סיפור לא צייצה. גם ילדים על כתפי אבותיהם, והשקט רב מנשוא, כמו לפני דבר נורא וגדול. ואני עוד רציתי להספיק ולתלות את הכבשים, לעשות זמן לעצמי, לתקן ריחותיי. וחיממתי את החלב לתינוק, שלא ירעב, שלא יבכה חלילה, ברגע הלא מתאים. כמה זמן עד כלות. הציפייה שתתייבש הכביסה והתינוק, מה? איש לא ידע, ואני ראיתי שרוח קלה, כמו נשמתו של איש ישן, עברה בכבשים ונפחה קריסה של כותנתי ומפת השבת. הייתה מפרס לבן באמצע המדבר. ויצאנו משם. על התכלת הרחק למקום בו. נפרוט רימונים ונאכל עסיסם למקום בו, לאהבה שם מפורש. Just below uh, those words at the bottom of page one, you have... Uh, In Hebrew, the words of uh, the Midrash, Shmot Rabbah, Amar Rabbi Abahu b'shem Rabbi Yochanan. Rabbi Abahu, in the name of Rabbi Yochanan. K'shanatan HaKadosh Baruch Hu Torah, Tzipor Lo Tzavach. In that moment when God gave the Torah, a bird, even birds, didn't chirp. Right? Of Lo Parach, fowl, didn't, Make whatever noise fowl make. Shor lo ga'a, right? Oxen. Ofanim lo afu, nothing flow. Srafim, the angels themselves, lo amru kadosh kadosh. Which according to rabbinic tradition, the angels actually say constantly in heaven. They're reciting kadusha all the time. הים לא נזדזע. Nothing moved. And perhaps most miraculously of all, human beings didn't speak. אלא העולם שותק ומחריש. The earth was silent and still. Imagine that for a moment. And then, v'yatsa hakol, then the voice, right, hakol, not any voice, the voice, emerged, anochi Adonai Elohecha. Kishi diber HaKadosh Baruch Hu Lar Sinai, when God spoke on Sinai, hishtik kol ha'olam, the whole world was silent. Kedei sheyidu abriot, שאין חוץ ממנו, there's no, no sound distraction, no noise pollution. The divine voice, clear, unambiguous, because it is the only thing that is, that is heard in that moment. On the next page, you'll find uh, David Jacobson's really elegant translation of Chava Pinchas Cohen's really elegant poem. He calls it in English a manifest name. She calls it the same, Shem Meforash. A 
riff on a well-known rabbinic phrase, Hashem HaMiforash, God's explicit name, but without the definite article. It's just a manifest name. They've all gone to the mountain to wait, to wait and see. Most quietly, they wait against their nature. Shalokim minhagam was the Hebrew. It's not their minhag to wait. Even donkeys, even camels. In this quiet, a bird did not chirp. Even children on their father's shoulders. The quiet, too much to bear. As if before a matter so awesome and great. But I still wished to finish hanging the laundry, to make time for myself, to refresh my aroma. The Hebrew for that, by the way, and I'll come back to it, was litaken rechotai. And litaken is, of course, a very loaded word in Hebrew, to refresh my aroma. And I warmed the baby's milk, lest he be hungry, lest he cry, perish the thought at an improper moment. How much longer till it ends? The expectation that the laundry will dry and the baby, what? No one knew, but I saw a light wind, like the breath of a person asleep, pass through the laundry and inflate the middle of my shirt, and the Sabbath tablecloth was a white sail in the middle of the wilderness. And we went from there on Azure, far to the place where we'll open pomegranates and devour their juice to the place where love has a manifest name. The speaker of our poem didn't go to shul on the morning of Shavuot. She stayed home. She wanted to hang the laundry. Maybe have another cup of coffee. Warm the baby's milk. Make time for herself. Litakain. Her tikkun, maybe Leil Shavuot or Boker Shavuot, involved staying home, watching the laundry dry. I love that image. If you've ever hung laundry on a uh, late spring morning in Jerusalem, let's say, you actually know that it doesn't take very long for it to dry. (laughs) It dries pretty quickly. But maybe the baby won't settle down, or maybe the baby will. And it's in that moment that the speaker of our poem receives Torah, has an experience that is of revelation. I refer to these two poems as revealing poems because that's really what they're about. 
she sees a light wind and that light wind is very subtle. It's like the breath of a person asleep. And some people asleep breathe loudly. I, I, I am told that I snore, for example. I, I've been denying it for 20 years, but I have, I have it on pretty good authority. But right, imagine just somebody lying asleep, breathing gently. That's the light wind. It passes through the laundry. It inflates the middle of her shirt and kind of the piece de resistance of this poem. Her mapat shabbat, her shabbat tablecloth becomes mifras lavan, a white sail in the middle of the wilderness. And there it is. She is suddenly in the place where love and shame miforash are one and the same. And she hasn't moved an inch. She stayed home. Everybody else went to the mountain to wait and see, to wait. These past 15 months, we've all had to stay home. Which hasn't cut off the possibility of religious experience of divine inspiration, of moments of revelation. Which are, which are available to us right at the kitchen sink. And every place else besides. On the next page, a medieval take on much the same phenomenon. Yehuda Halevi, perhaps the best known of our medieval poets, is a son and in many ways the poster child of Golden Age Spain. He's an Andalusian by birth and by education and by culture. He reads, writes, composes poetry in Hebrew and in Arabic. He's a philosopher. He's a Talmudist. It turns out he's a Bible commentator too, which we're about to discover. I'm going to show you the. I'm going to show you the source. Our translator is um, my teacher, uh, Professor Raymond Schindlin. Uh, and uh, Ray has a number of wonderful collections of uh, medieval Spanish poems in translation. Uh, this, comes, this comes from one of those volumes. And notice in the Hebrew that uh, Halevi frequently, not always, but frequently, uh, actually signs his name to his poems. And the way that he does it is to spell out his first name in the first letter of each of the lines of the poem. So many of his poems are five line poems because his name had five letters in it. Uh, by way of contrast, the, the other giant of Golden Age Spain, the other poetic giant of Golden Age Spain is Shlomo Ibn Gabirul, um, for whom uh, Tel Aviv's main drag is named, by the way. And uh, every Israeli mispronounces his name. <laughs> In Israel, it's Ibn Gabirul, which it wasn't, but never mind. Um, 
Ibn Gabi Roll's first name was Shlomo, and consequently, many of his small poems, most of his small poems, are four line poems because they spell out his name. So, the good news about Halevi, therefore, is we we get an extra line of uh, of the good stuff uh, in a, in a Halevi poem. So. Here he is. Imagine it on a shovel oat morning, perhaps much like this one. Ye iruni vishimcha rayonai, viasimu chasadecha lefanai, heavy nuni dvar nefesh yitzarta. Shura vi vihini flat benai. Vilibi ra aha vaya amen bach. Ki ilu ma amad hayab sinai. Dirashticha bechezionai ve avar. Kivodcha bi via rad ba ananai. Hekimuni sa si pai. Ugh, I screw this word up every single time. Let's let me try that again. Hekimuni si pai mi 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 tsuai levarech shem kvodecha Adonai. So catch the ending, right? It's I I I I I I I. And here's uh, here's Professor Shinlin's. Again, very elegant translation. My meditations on your name aroused me. They set before my face your acts of love. Revealed to me the soul that you created, bound to me, yet past my understanding. My heart beheld you and was sure of you, as if... I stood myself at Sinai Mountain. Now, now you know where I got the title for this session from, okay? Ki ilu ma'amad hayab Sinai. I sought you in my dreams, your glory passed before my face on clouds descending, landing. My thoughts awakened me to rise from bed, to bless your glorious name, O Lord, commanding. Halevi writes not infrequently about the dream experience. And like the ancient rabbis and many ancient thinkers, sees in dreams real religious experience, spiritual communication. Dreams have significance. There are a couple of pages in the Babylonian Talmud, Masech Brachot, that actually spell it out. Right? If you dream about X, it means Y is going to happen. If you dream about Y, it means X is going to happen. Right? Th those dreams are actual communication from God, right? from the beyond. They're past our understanding and simultaneously bound to us. He calls these dreams a couple of different things, meditations, revelations. But writes, I sought you in my dreams. Right? My heart beheld you as if, as if I stood myself at Sinai Mountain. So imagine the speaker of our poem in bed, early on a Shavuot morning. The uh, practice of staying up all night to learn Torah on Shavuot um, 
post-dates Halevi. So he almost certainly went to bed on, uh, on, on Shavuot night and woke up the next morning, or the speaker of his poem woke up the next morning and had this dream. And in that dream, felt the divine presence, saw and felt God's acts of love, saw and felt his own soul, as if he were standing at Sinai. Halevi, Ibn Dabi Rol, all of the Golden Age uh, Spanish thinkers and writers uh, rely on Bachya Ibn Pakuda's duties of the heart. Uh, we rely on it still as a guide to the inner life. Keep in mind one thing, oh my brother, writes Bachya. When reading the things described by me in this chapter, all these are but a few of the many secrets of wisdom you may discover if you search for them with a pure heart and an innocent soul. But he goes on to say, you can only get so far because you're a human being. Remember that whatever you've seen and understood of God's wisdom and ability, as manifested in this world, there's that word again, is nothing in, compar nothing in comparison to the whole of God's wisdom and ability. I mean, Halevi's poem really reflects that. He, the speaker knows he's gotten a glimpse. He's bound to what he's gotten and it's beyond his understanding. And in this poem, he's in fact riffing on Psalm 139, a much beloved psalm of the medieval Spanish poets and thinkers. Uh, on this uh, next page, page four, uh, you've got a couple of verses of that psalm and a bit of Ibn Ezra's commentary. And look at Ibn Ezra's commentary on verse one. This psalm is very weighty in the ways of the Lord. In the book of Psalms, there's no other psalm like it. Its meaning can be penetrated only to the extent of one's understanding of darche hanishama and darche Hashem. The ways of God and the ways of the soul. And look who he quotes in verse in his comment on verse 14. Right? I know it very well. In the opinion of Rabbi Yehuda Halevi, may he rest in peace. It means your works are too wonderful for me. They're beyond me, even though my soul is very aware. That's our poem. And that's the message as we wake up to this Shavuot morning. Ki ilu ma'amad hayab Sinai. As if we were standing together at Mount Sinai. Boker tov, chag sameach. That was that was so beautiful. That was really beautiful. Um, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you for your Sinai background to remind us what we're all supposed to be uh, thinking about this morning and such beautiful teachings. It was really a pleasure to be with you. Thank you, Deborah. And hey, Mark Israel. Long time <laughs> to see. Good morning. Booker Tov. Hag Sameach. Hag Sameach. That's, you're, you. you're looking at Sinai in Maryland. Beautiful. <laughs> uh, your, your words truly beautiful, uh, uh, David, and thank you for sharing uh, that gorgeous poetry. Thank you. Uh, nice to be able to see you. It's great to see you. Hope your family is well. I miss you, Mark. Thank you. I'll be up in Philly. Look forward to uh, catching up. I, I got a, I got a, I got a cup of coffee with your name on it. <laughs>